Hi, this is Sophie. In my previous video, I told you all about the round brush and the many things that you can do with it. But it is obviously not the only uh, face painting brush that exists. There are many others to create really fun and different brush strokes. And I would like to show you my five favorite ones. The filbert brush, also called chisel brush or cat's tongue, is actually a flat brush rounded at the tip. The really large one that I just showed you is, in my opinion, mostly used in body painting. Uh, I don't use it very much in face painting. The one I use the most is this one here, which is a medium-sized filbert brush. I often use it to fill in spaces or shapes that are too small to fill out with a sponge. Because this brush is flat, it goes a lot faster than if I would be using a round brush to do the same thing. Just like with the round brush, it's very possible to do teardrops with a filbert brush. However, each teardrop will have the same width. At the beginning of the teardrop, the brush will be very flat on the skin, and at the end, it will be on its thinner edge. Therefore, you will need to twist the brush between your fingers while at the same time pulling the teardrop in the desired direction. Remember the double loading technique that I showed you with the round brush? Well, it's possible to do exactly the same thing with the filbert brush and create, for example, really cute little flowers. Um, the petals will, however, be a little bit larger. I always keep a completely dry, medium-sized filbert brush while I face paint because if I don't want any harsh lines between the contour color and the base color, in this case the purple and the pink, I take my completely dry um, filbert brush and I pull the purple color or the contour color into the base color while um, the purple is still wet, otherwise it's not going to work. This is going to create a very nice and soft blend between the two colors. Uh, this technique is called um, dry blending. I just recently got this brush, so I haven't been able to experiment with it a lot. I think it looks kind of funny. Um, what I found is that it makes really cute uh, little daisies. As you can see, the brush strokes are very uh, thin and delicate. Um, so I encourage you to experiment with this brush and maybe you can let me know what you come up with. The name says it all, this brush is square and flat and exists um, just like most brushes in different sizes. The ones I use the most is the one I just showed you, the 3 quarter inch, and um, the smaller size, um, which I think is a number 10 or a number 8. If you press it flat, you will get a thick line. If you press it on its edge, you will get a very thin line. Very often, it is used uh, with a combination of both, for example, to do calligraphy. It's not something I'm very good at, but um, someone who face paints need to be prepared to do something like this because a lot of teenagers uh, like to have um, something written on their arm or shoulders in the summer. As I told you earlier, I used a 3 quarter inch um, flat brush, which is by the way sometimes called one stroke brush really a lot because it has the perfect size for the small split cake. Uh, as you can see, it's also possible to use smaller size flat brushes with the split cake uh, if you want to catch only two or three colors. I will now spend a little bit more time to explain to you how to use split cakes because they're really a lot of fun to work with. So first I will show you how to load your brush properly. Dip your brush completely in water and tap the excess water on the side of the glass or rub it slightly on the tissue. Then take your split cake and spritz it two or three times with water. Put your brush very flat on the split cake and start rubbing it back and forth over the whole length. You will know that you're ready to paint when your brush is easily sliding or gliding over the surface of the split cake without any resistance. So you probably will need to spritz your split cake one or two more times before um, you're ready to start. If you load your brush well, you will be able to paint longer. So make sure that uh, the paint is loaded um, as far up the bristles of the brush as possible. When you need to reload your brush, just spritz your split cake and rub the brush on the surface. However, if you spritz too much water, this will happen. All the colors will get muddied up together. So get rid of the excess water, clean the surface of your split cake with a wet tissue, and start again from the beginning. Here are a few strokes that are good to practice before you start more complicated designs. First of all, a simple straight line. 
Use then only the edge of the brush and create a series of straight thin lines. Try to do a small bridge, then flip your brush over and do another one next to it. Now the colors are inverted. The opposite move is a U shape. Now here's one that I use a lot. A simple straight line and a sort of half circle underneath. And this is the petal shape. Notice how the bottom bristles, where the purple color is, are hardly moving at all, while at the same time, the upper bristles, where the green color is, are doing a complete half circle. What I call the flame shape requires a little bit more practice. Start with a small V, then place your brush flat and end on its point, while at the same time twisting it slightly. Then do the same thing on the other side. The next step would be to practice uh, these different shapes at different angles, either on the practice head if you have one, or you can also laminate a picture of a head and practice on it like I'm doing right now. And just in case you're wondering, I'm right now using what I think is a very beautiful and elegant split cake uh, color combination called Retro from the brand Chameleon. This was sent to me by a very nice lady who owns an online uh, face painting shop in Germany and I will put her reference in the description box below. Go ahead and try to combine the different shapes into one design. For example, this is uh, the typical princess crown. And these are the famous one-stroke rosebuds. Look, it's so easy. A little bridge, a little U, and a couple of uh, teardrop shapes on the side. As I mentioned before, I often use smaller size flat brushes with split cake. For example, when I want to use a two color combination, uh, just like here, the light and the dark green, to paint some leaves. I use uh, my flame shape to do the simple leaf and I usually paint them in uh, little groups. And here is another form of leaf um, that you might want to try out. These little leaves are not too complicated to make and they really are great enhancement to any flower design. The liner brush has only a few bristles that are very long and soft. When it is loaded with paint, it should have a sharp point. It can be used to create a very delicate outline, for example here, around the flowers and leaves that we painted earlier. I personally find it a little bit difficult to manipulate, but I've seen some other face painters um, use it um, a lot better than me to create some beautiful curls and swirls to enhance their designs. Or to add uh, tiny details and um, bring uh, highlights and lowlights wherever it's needed. I personally use it mostly as an eyeliner, which is obviously perfect for that. If I'm face painting an adult or if the child is old enough, I might also underline the eye and for an even more dramatic look, create a small triangular shape in the inner corner of the eye. The angular brush looks actually very similar to the square flat brush, except that the bristles have been cut at an angle. This unique shape makes it ideal, in my opinion, to outline the wings of a butterfly, which is what I mostly use it for by alternating between thin and thick lines. I sometimes paint another layer inside of the wing of the same or different color uh, to add more interest. This is how I clean my brushes after a job. I first put them under running water to get rid of most of the paint uh, inside of the bristles. I use a special brush soap um, from Da Vinci. Uh, this is a really, really good soap and I highly recommend it. I rub the soap into my hands until I have a lot of foam in them. Then I grab my brushes and I start um, massaging the bristles uh, between my fingers quite firmly. Um, don't be afraid uh, to do this for at least a minute because you will see that uh, the paint inside uh, keeps coming out. I then rinse them thoroughly and dry them with a kitchen towel. And this is important, I smooth um, the bristles between my fingers to straighten them and make sure that they're back to their original shape. And I make sure that all the points are quite sharp before I put them down uh, to dry overnight.
To store my large brushes, I use this practical, traditional makeup artist brush bucket, which is made out of a flexible synthetic material, which is easy to clean. Uh, it's closed with a Velcro, and as you can see inside, each brush has its own little compartment, which makes it very easy to put them in and take them out. For my smaller brushes, I use this uh, hard case from Artbin. Now this is really great because as you can see, each brush is individually held between foam inserts, which makes it literally impossible for the bristles uh, to bend or get into a funny shape while I transport them. In this video, you've seen me use different color combinations of split cakes that I actually make myself. So if you two are interested in learning how to make your very own small, medium or large split cake, then click on the link to learn how to do that. Um, I wish you a really great day. Thank you for following me on YouTube. Bye!